right then. Hello and welcome back to the Swedish Touring Card Championship, getting ready for round number six of the season. Yesterday was a perfect start for the weekend. We had a victory uh, and we won the race, I think, by eight seconds or just over. So hopefully we can repeat that performance today and get another victory under our belt. And yeah, without further ado, let's just get round six underway. And this is the starting grid then. Jan Nilsson, Tommy Christofferson, and Matthias Ekstrom, the top three. Jens Edman, yesterday's second place finisher, starts fourth. Carl Rosenblad, Hubert Berg, Frederick Ekblom, Tommy Rustad, Jan Brunstead, and Thomas Shee at the top ten. Then you've got Stefan Lindberg, Thomas Ekstrom, Pegan Anderson, Thomas Johansson, and Netten Lindgren, the top fifteen, with myself starting at the back in the Alpha 156. There we go then, another rolling start, and away we go. So I'm going to immediately dive on the inside past Lindgren. As they all barrel into turn number one. Oh, a little bit of argy-bargy at the start, which is always common. And already after the first couple of corners, up into sixth place, already made up ten spots. At the very start. I believe that is Edmund. Just in front. This corner again is the main one that catches me out. Oh, excuse me. Oh, and there's the car sliding again. Come on, get a move on. Not what we want to happen at the very start, but it's fine because this section here, my favourite of the circuit, you can carry much more speed than the competitors. So all is not lost, we still got 17 laps to go, Edmund is just up ahead and Tommy Christopherson in the Audi just up ahead of him. So, if I can keep my cool and not do that by going through the gravel trap, we should be able to pick up a second victory of the weekend. To increase our figurative points haul. Not sure if we're going to be leading the championship because I have to do all the points manually post-race. Uh, so, we'll see anyway. I think we're currently fifth in the standings or thereabouts. So I could probably take this corner flat out, but I'm a little bit nervous about the rear end stepping out on me. Get past Edmund. Uh, it's Tommy and Carl next. A nice wide entry again to avoid the car from getting sideways. Got a better run from Christofferson. Right back to the corner that I hate the most. So far so good, up into fourth place. The leader though has pulled a massive lead. Hoping we can actually catch that up. Yeah, there he is. You can see him in the distance. Perfect run, get past the Primera. And then the sister Audi of Matthias Ekstrom. Ooh, just running out a little bit wide. Getting my breaking point completely wrong. My line is fine. Now, I never did find out why some of the cars have red numbers on the doors and not black. I think they might be independent, so I'm not entirely sure. 
Because the British Touring Car Championship, if you were an independent, you had like a blue background with white numbers on the doors. But we have an eight second lead to try and catch up. We should be able to do it, I hope. Did lose a bit of time though, trying to get past second place. See what the timing is once we get across the start finish line, get past this section. No, come on. Behave. 13 to go. Oh, pulled it back a little bit from Jan Nilsson. 7.6 seconds now instead of 8. As long as I don't slide the car too much. And get my lines spot on. We should catch that up fairly quickly. Saying that, and I go off the track. Well done, me. It all depends if we catch up to any back markers as well, which will slow down the front end. But if not, you know, a second place is always welcome. I haven't lost too much ground on him either. He's still just up ahead. I should really go out wide and cut the corner a little bit tighter going through the last turn. 7.74, so yeah, we didn't lose that much. Come on, stop doing that, please. You really do need to treat the car as if you're driving on marbles. It is really uh, quite a difficult one. To try to avoid the car from spinning out on you. I think we have lost a bit of time, though, because of that. There you go. Go wide. Tight. Exit. There you go. That's a bit better. Carry a little bit more speed. Not much. Yeah, we've lost a lot of time now. 8.2 seconds now is lead. I think I'm just pushing too hard, which is causing the car to oversteer. I just need to take the lines I took yesterday. Just make sure I play it cool. And again, the car just tries to step out. Plenty of time anyway. 11 laps to go still. And that's why, if you notice, I'm not actually turning that hard into the corners. Because I do want to avoid the car from sliding out. The harder the, the car turns... The more instances of the car oversteering. What were we before? 8.2 seconds, and what is it now? Ah, oh, we pull it back down by two tenths of a second. Gotta be quite a tall order though if we can actually catch up. And stop doing that. Oh for God's sake, will you stop? No, I think we're gonna have to settle for second place on this one. Because the car is not behaving that well at all compared to yesterday. He's already going around the start-finish line. 
from the start finish straight. Nine laps remaining, and yeah, ten seconds now is lead. So I don't think we're going to catch that back up anytime soon. That's better. That's a problem pushing too hard, you make mistakes, the car doesn't behave, it does that, even going at literally 10 miles an hour. Uh, it looks like he's caught up to some back markers, so this might be our chance. We can actually put in some good lap times. Cash up, and then we might be able to squeeze up some of the time we've lost. Yeah, 7.9 seconds, so he's definitely caught the back markers. Just up ahead. All right, how far have we caught clawed back? Oh, that is just him up ahead. Nice. Okay, only 1.2 seconds now. So that is him in the Volvo getting caught by the Ford Mondeo. I love it when the AI do actually play into my favour. Not when the car does that though. So we've got seven laps to go, or six and a half laps left. A flash of green right up ahead. Right, now's our chance. As long as the Mondeo plays ball, we're point three of a second behind. Scratch that, we've taken the lead. Scratch that again, we're back into second, and the car spins. Now we've taken the lead again. Lovely. We had six laps to go. We can get past the fat ass Stratus. Without him pushing us around, that'll be helpful. Nicely done. There's my teammate up ahead as well. Or I should say my twin. As I mentioned before, they haven't programmed in a different number for my car, so we're both using car number 15. There we go. Right, get past Netton. Thank you very much. And from being 10 seconds down, we're now 3 seconds up. And slowly pulling away, I hope. Five laps to go. Total time at the bottom so far, 13 minutes. It's 
Still haven't beaten the fastest lap from yesterday either, 58.63. One six of a second back from our fastest lap time. We'll try this time. It looks like we're catching up to even more back markers as well. Three laps to go. Get past the Opal. Oh, no! Right, keep your foot in it, keep your foot in it, come on. Swing it around, swing it around. Oh my word, we went off into the boonies big time. Oh, there we go. Well, we're not going to beat the lap time this time, and I think we've just lost most of our advantage. Oh no, just behind there, so that's fine. We're good. I am determined to beat that 58.6, though. We'll try it on this lap. The penultimate lap begins now. Hopefully the Opal Vectra won't get in the way. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Nope, still not going to beat the lap time. Oh, that's a shame. Oh yeah, we did actually, 58.3. Which is good. As we begin the final lap. So, two races, two victories for this weekend. That may actually put us into the lead in the points, or at least a top three. Again, I don't really know for sure, because I have to do all the points after and add them up manually. But we shall see. Here we go then, last couple of corners, the final complex, and we pick up a clean sweep for the weekend, two races, two victories, and we finish. Nicely done. And these are the race results then, so we get another victory, that's another 20 points to add to the collection. Jan Nielsen and Carl Rosenblad rounding out the podium, all the way down to Jan Brunstad who gets the one point. And of course, this is the total points at the moment, but don't worry about this because I need to add up all the points um, from the previous rounds and everything else. So the actual points then are as follows. So uh, yeah, we're either in, a, I think we're in the top three, I don't know because I 
haven't added the points up just yet. So we'll pack up everything and get ready to move on then for rounds 7 and 8 of the championship. And where is it coming from? The heat is unbearable here today at Anderstorp in Smallland. You could easily imagine the drivers losing their senses by dehydration. At least 5 litres of water is consumed before every race under these extreme conditions. The driver also has to dress themselves up in all kinds of protective fireproof equipment in case of emergency. The Scandinavian Raceway is very tried out and tested track which will give both the drivers and audience a race to remember. Indeed, so Anderstorp, we have actually raced here before on a multiple plethora of sims, so we should know our way around this track fairly easily. Um, but the weather is clear, and it's hot apparently, but that could change because, of course, the championship doesn't save, so I have to actually go back and just go through the races again, cancel them out and stuff, and get back to where we started from or finished from. So uh, it could be raining next time, who knows? Anyway... 13 laps around Anderstorp for next time, and uh, yeah, that will be next time. So thank you very much for watching, as always, and I'll see you next time then for round 7 and 8 of the Swedish Touring Car Championship. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.